Hello everyone, good morning. Thank you so much for joining and this is Civilized Presence. You are in the right place at the right time. And I'm so happy to have you here this morning. Good morning. This is Esther from Nigeria. Thank you so much for being here. Good morning, good morning. This is Sandra from Canada. We are trying to get our guests on the line right now. She'll be here with us momentarily. How are you today? It is the Memorial's weekend over here, and we have a holiday. So I am so excited, but good time to be with you. There can be nowhere as important as being with you this morning. Good morning, Joanne. Thank you so much for joining. Hi, Christy. So Hi, good to Lo see you. Hi, Louisa. Good morning. You're as beautiful as ever. Thank you. You too. Good morning. Thank you so Thank much for you. joining us from Canada. I was just saying that here in the U.S., we have the Memorial's Weekend. Okay. So it's a holiday today. Hello, Joanne from Malaysia. Thank you for joining. And so um, it's a holiday and most people are at home. And I'm just looking forward to have a busy uh, series this morning. Good morning, Morel. Thank you so much for joining from Montreal, Canada. Thank you. So, guys, this is the Civilized Presence, and we are so happy to have you here. So, usually, we would be here at 7.30 a.m. Eastern Time every Mondays and Fridays. But I have an announcement to make later on. I could just do it right now. Um, our time will be changing beginning from the 1st of June. Hello, Enobong. Um, thank you so much for joining from Nigeria. It's so good to have you. So our time is going to change, and we will be doing this at 9.30 a.m. Eastern Time. Uh, that's the time when we have most of our viewers online. And this program really is for you, is to serve you and just have fun with you on Mondays and Fridays. So I, I thought it's important for us to be here when you're here. Hello, Charles Benin. Could you please get down on the comment box below and just let me know where you are calling in from? because I really want to take the time to acknowledge you. Hello, Jacqueline. Thank you from Florida. Thank you. It's so good to have you this morning. So welcome, guys. This is the 11th session of our Facebook series. I am so happy. I'm so excited. 11th session. Session number 11. So we made it. Hello, Bonsi from Toronto, Canada. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, like I had said, we are usually here at 7.30 a.m., Eastern time on Mondays and Fridays, but our time has changed now to 9.30 a.m. Eastern time, Mondays and Fridays. Now, another change that we have is that we are going to be broadcasting starting next month um, within our Facebook page. So it would be nice for you to kind of go around there and just like us on our business Facebook page, which is So Unique Experts. You can also follow us on Instagram. It is so unique experts. And I am so excited to have you here. And I know that you're here because you have an interest in this topic. But we do have people on your network, I believe, that would want to benefit from this program too. Can you do us a favor by just liking this video and sending us some love, some hats? I can see all the hats coming up. Because Facebook loves the hats and the likes. And they will make this video available for a lot more people. So do us a favor by just liking and loving this video. Thank you so much. And you can also paste it on your page or in your private groups if you do have one. Thank you as you do that. So I really do appreciate you guys for celebrating my 11th session anniversary with me today. <laughs> I am so excited. I, I appreciate you. Um, now, the main focus of this Facebook series is really to have meaningful and constructive conversations about restoring civility in our homes, in our society. And I had mentioned this uh, the first series, but maybe there's somebody new here. I wouldn't be doing this alone. I'm bringing in experts from all over the world. I really want you to know that we do have an expert around you. So even though you're not in Virginia to meet with Louisa, there is someone always in your neighborhood that you can work with. Now, for those of you who do not know me or have never met me, my name is Louisa Akaizo, 
and I am a master civility trainer and a leadership expert. Now, do you want to know what I do? I work confidently with leaders that pay great importance in their reputation. And that should be you this morning because you are here uh, trying to learn and add on some value to yourself. Now, before we go further, I'm going to have to introduce to you our guest, and she is Christy Enebeli. Christy is a civility trainer and also a courtesy coach. So a courtesy coach is a civility trainer who works uh, mainly with children. Um, civil, um, Christy is the CEO of Ma Minus Matters Nigeria, but right now she's presently in Canada. She's um, relocated to Canada. So maybe we're going to have to change the name of the company very soon to <laughs> Minus Matters Toronto. But we this should. Is, that's right. This is Christy. Christy, can you just say hello to the audience, please? Hello, everyone. Good morning. It's nice to be in your midst today. And thanks, Lisa, for having me. Perfect. Thank you so much. So, guys, we are getting to the end of May. May is the Global Civility Awareness Month. How many of us tried to be civil this month? You know, we have talked about this from the 1st of May, and we explained how easy it is for you to be civil. It, it starts with something as little as saying thank you, please and thank you, or even smiling at the first person or whoever that you meet every day. You do have an opportunity and a, and a chance to change someone's experience. Um, we have spoken about this severally, that civility is focused on people's treatment. So civility, I'm going to share with you the definition from civility experts, that civility is a conscious awareness of the impact of one's thoughts, actions, words, and intentions on others, combined with a continuous acknowledgement of one's responsibility to ease the experience of others, example, true restraint, kindness, non-judgment, uh, respect, and courtesy, and a consistent effort to adapt and exhibit a civil behavior as a non-negotiable point of one's character. Now, when you pay attention to this definition, you can see that it is your responsibility to continuously ease the experience of other people. You know, you have to learn and get in the habit of treating people the way that you want to be treated. Um, you don't have to expect something in return, but just do it because it is right and because they are human. Okay, so if you have never been civil before, it is not too late. You can start today. As soon as we're done with the session, say hello to someone, give someone a hug, um, get in the grocery store on the road, try to give them a helping hand, or even just smile or share a compliment. Like, I'm just going to say that, Christy, you look amazing this morning. And that Thank is you, what Lisa. civility is. <laughs> Thank Great. you. So last week, we had Joanne Ho from Malaysia, and she spoke you know, to us on some of the pet peeves of travel, um, um, elevator, and um, driving etiquette. And that was great and fun because that's a topic that, you know, bothers me all the time. Hello, Obot, thank you so much for joining. I really do appreciate you. I know that you're calling from um, New York. Thank you. Casey, thank you from London, UK. I appreciate you. Thank you for joining us. So that's a topic that affects everyone. When we get in the airport, you know, the airport is just like a mad house sometimes. So you might be in your best of moods, but as soon as you get to the airport, people get you so irritated and you are in a hurry and just want to jump on the plane and go. And I don't think that things should be that way. And sometimes when we are driving, we have drivers cursing people on the road. Wow. So it was so nice to have uh, Juan talk to us in the do's and don'ts of driving um, in terms of etiquette, of traveling, and elevator. That was really great. So for today, we're doing something totally different. So we have Christy in the house, and she will be teaching us about time management and responsibility in children. Guys, how many of us have children or have people around us who have kids? Time management is a huge problem. Hello, Naomi. Thank you so much for joining us. And I thought this was a great and very important topic because a lot of parents struggle 
with time management. The children never get it right at the first time. So you have to work with them. You have to have patience. And you have to be able to exemplify the same thing. Because if you're just lazy and all over the place, <laughs> you're not going to expect something good from your kids. So you have to do it yourself and then pass it on to them. And I'll share a personal example about time management. Um, you know, for example, as a trainer and a speaker, I travel a lot and a lot of times I have to leave the kids at home. And I have this board because I'm very traditional in certain things. I had to have this board just right by the kitchen and I listed out the 10 things that you should do every morning. And believe me, I had comb your hair on the board because I wanted to make sure that they're going to show up the same way like they would when I was in town. So I'm not going to say too much. I'm just going to leave this to the expert because she's in the house. So Christy, usually how this runs is that I'm just going to give you the questions um, and you would be able to talk to the audience. Sometimes we might have extra questions on the comment box and I'll read it out to you and you will be able to answer the questions just before we go. So the first question for you is, what is the responsibility of the family in cultivating good manners and life skills in the children. Over to you, Christy. Okay, so first, good morning, everyone. And um, it's lots of gratitude to Louisa for having me. And it's a privilege for me to always share my experience. So first, I'm a mom <laughs> of a 10 and a five-year-old. Great. So I think that qualifies me to speak, to, er to speak rather to everybody because I'm in that shoes. Mm -hmm. And also, I am a civility expert with special attention to kids. And so going back to Louisa's question, uh, basically, we need to understand that being a family setup is an opportunity. Mm -hmm. We take for granted the fact that we live with the same people every day. You have them from cradle, mm -hmm. they go through teenage years, they get married, you have the opportunity to see them every day. Mm -hmm. So we need to understand that the family unit is a major platform. I say to lead and to be led. Mm -hmm. So sometimes my children, that mom, why did you shout? And I'll say, I'm sorry. I'm able to exemplify that. And then when my son also makes an error, oh, mommy, I'm sorry. I know I have to also <coughs> forgive. So it's an opportunity for us to live our lives raw. You mean, no, you mean no, no makeups, no facade, nothing to cover. We're just who we are. It's a, it's, a, it's a great platform. And for those of us that are not married yet, there are people you can influence. An uncle can influence the niece or the nephew. You can influence your cousins. You can influence your siblings. So we need to take, I mean, I'm African. And I know that in my culture, we normally say the whole village, excuse me, raises the child because we all see the collective good in being a family. For us in Africa, in my home country, family goes beyond just myself, my husband, my two kids. The next neighbor and the next village is part of your family and they will watch out to ensure that everything goes well within you. So what I'm basically saying is that family is a great platform. Mm -hmm. It gives us the influence because you are constantly in touch with everybody. You need not look for someone to make you a leader. You're mm. already a leader within the setup that nature, God, circumstance has put you into. And then we need to maximize it. Great. Thank you so much. I see some um, communities uh, whereby, for example, the Indians and the Chinese and everyone is involved in bringing up the child. And of course, also African communities. We try to, you know, I remember while we're growing up, um, even when your parents were not there, you had to behave the right way, especially when you saw an auntie, you're running away if you're doing something wrong. And that's Perfect. how it should be, that the children should understand that I have to do the right thing, whether I like it or not. You know, mm. my and um, the family should take it as their responsibility to guide those kids because the kids cannot do it on their own. They don't know it. Mm. You have to show them the best way to go about it. So the second question would be, when should we get started on this course? And is there a time in a child's life where it matters the most? Over to you. Okay. So I would say that you need to start right now. Start from when they are born. Start from right when they came into your arms from the, from the labor room. Start from where you have the relationship with that little niece. Some of us over time, you have a nephew come stay with you for a few weeks. The few times you are there, ensure you impact them. I remember some weeks ago, I had my, my nephews come over to stay with me. 
And I had to tell them the same culture in the house. You lay your bed. When you wake up, you comb your hair before you leave the house. You pack up after you. I mean, somebody should be able to spend 10, 10 minutes with you and go leave your presence or leave your home with an addition to what they don't have from their homes. For us as parents, the earlier, the better. Do not wait until your, te your kids are teenagers. My son is 10. My daughter is now with every minute i spend with them when mm -hmm. i drive them to school like my mom would always tell me remember the child of who you are so when mm -hmm. i'm when, as we're going to school I'll tell them what are two things you remember <coughs> my cat my kids would say remember the child of who you are and to remember that god is with you so you need to have a mantra for your family what what is it you want your family to be how do you want your kids to be so basically mm -hmm. like any other thing like building a house like going for a career you need to define the goal for your family it's different for each family. My father always right. says that each family is unique. So start by defining what my family is going to be known for. What do I want my kids to grow up to be? How do we, how should we be identified? If somebody calls my son name and they want to relate my son to me, what would be spoken of that name? You need to define that. And when you do define that, you need to now set activities around that. For example, we don't tell lies in our home. Our yes is yes. Our no is no. My husband tells me that his father used to tell him that then you need to be home by 7 p.m. And I heard him tell, I heard him telling my son that you know, when you grow up, you cannot be home at night uh, before 7 p.m. So these are things I need to define sometimes based on our experience as individuals, based mm -hmm. on what we see in life, what we've been through with defining goals for our family, how big we need to start immediately. Immediately you have to influence, the opportunity to influence, take it up and run with it. Perfect. Thank you so much. So civility takes care of the end in mind. Exactly. In everything that you want to do, think about the end in mind. What do you want your child to be uh, remembered for? You mm -hmm. do not want your child to go around with the levels of the society. So you exactly. have to do the hard work inside the home. I'm just going to acknowledge new people who have come on. I have Olabisi Awolia. Can you please pop in, in the comment box where you're calling in from? I appreciate you for being here. I have Naomi. Um, please tell us where you're calling from. I have Arikan. Tell us where you're calling from. I have John. Tell us where you're calling from. And I have Tony Abiola. Please let us know where you're calling from. We love you and we appreciate you. Thank you so much. I have Kiki. Could you pop in in the comment below where you're calling from? Thank you so much. It's so good to see you. So another question for you, Krista, this morning is, how do you go about building positive habits? Uh, such as time management and other life skills in the children. Okay, so like I said earlier, I, I gave the first point. First is to define the goal for your family. Mm -hmm. You need to define, you know, I will give an example. And this got me thinking a time back. I went to pick my son from school and then the, pair, the teacher I recall reported that he had done something wrong at school, which I felt was very disappointing. My son told, him, told me his friend asked him to do the wrong thing and then he did it. So when mm -hmm. we got home that day, in fact, when I got, I, I got a call from school, from, from the school at work, and I thought, I had to press it, God, please let me know what to do. I, I didn't know if I should go home. I know a proper African woman just beat him up or talked to him. I was really mm -hmm. confused. Mm -hmm. And then I decided not to tell my husband. I decided not to tell his grandmom who was home with him. So when I got home, I called him in and I learned a very important lesson I want to share. And then I called him and I asked him what happened. He told me what he did wrong. So I asked him, well, are, you, are you supposed to influence others or be influenced or to be the influence? He said it was supposed to be the influence. I said, okay, so you understand that. Well, I said, I'm going to give you two lashes of cane on your bum because you've gone against what you expected to do. And then mm. I did. And then I, I, I allowed him to go to bed. Amazingly, the next morning, my, mom, my son comes, walks up to me and says, uh, Mommy, thank you for disciplining me. And I'm like, excuse me. I said, what do you mean? He said, uh, because you're trying to make me a better person. My son was about eight years old then. I'm like, oh, really? But you know, what I understood is that anytime you see your child misbehave, mm -hmm. there is a knowledge gap. Right. So if you see a child that's told something, please don't beat the child up because the child has embarrassed you. You've just gotten a lesson to teach. So mm -hmm. go down. For example, I need to learn a course on stealing. My son just told, so I need to ensure that my child has teachings on integrity. Mm -hmm. My son is disorganized. So I have a course, like we're doing university course, one-on-one, 
because one on one on character, for example. So mm. each time you see your child have an issue, you have just seen a lesson you need to pick from. So that mm. is it with every child. Some kids are more organized. My daughter is, I think I'll call my daughter, she's more gentle. My son is more aggressive. So they mm. both, they, they have two different courses I need to teach. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so God gave me that wisdom. And I was like, oh, really? As, again, for us parents, it's not about your ego. It's not about your good name. It's not about being embarrassed. It's about my child and the vision I want him to be. Mm. And then you pick it up as a course, and then that would be your vision for the time. And also, it changes per time. Okay. Okay. For example, I'm already training my children about sexual purity before marriage, and we've mm. started talking about it. We have the habit of your vision board. They know the part of your body nobody should touch. You know, in fact, if I'm in the house and my trousers sucks, sags, my son comes and pulls up my my trousers and says, "I'm very sorry." So these are things you need to exemplify. Mm. First, have your vision. Then secondly, you need to exemplify it. So if mm. you don't know the stuff you want your child to know, please go read it up. Right now, I'm reading about six books at different times. So I read one when I'm, I'm having lunch at work, how to raise a son. I'm reading another one on how to be an author. So you need to find time to get the knowledge you need for your children. You need to get it now. Thirdly, you have to have things around the house that talks about it. So first, what I did, I have my dream board in my bathroom. So while I'm waking up, put my makeup and powder on one side of the room, on the other side is my vision for the next 10 years. And my son got inspired because he has his bath. He takes his bath in the bathroom and in. And he mm -hmm. says, Mommy, I've read yours. And then I had to take them through the same thing. My kids now have a vision board in your room. My son says he wants to be an author before he's 18. I say, so that's good. You need to start to read books. We need mm. to watch your pronunciation. We need to watch the way you speak. Again, it's not just about character, but also major goals that you see that your kids have the traits to be. Mm. Then thirdly, have, like I said, have them around the house. You know, we don't steal. We don't tell lies. We don't, you know, you have those, you have it and you let them know this is what the family values is about. Thirdly, I would say that you need to have the regiments. Mm. You need to have the regimen. There's a time to wake up. You, you don't sleep into the house, into the into 10, 11 a.m. at night in the morning. That's wrong. They need to pack up when they're back from school. They need to arrange their lunch bags. You'll be surprised that when your kids go on holidays in somebody's house, when they wake up, they will fold their PJs. They will lay their bed because it becomes part of them. Somebody mm. says something you do for consistently for 21 days becomes a habit. Guys, we've got about 21 days to spend with our children. Mm. We miss it because we're not intentional. You mm. need to be extremely intentional about how you want your kids to be, how you want them to be presented, mm. how you want them to act, how you want them to be. It mm. has to start now. So paint the vision. Like with anything, if you aim at nothing, you will get nothing. Be extremely... I mean, I live now in the West. It's difficult to raise kids. You need to be That's very correct. intentional about how you want them to be, what you want them to say, how you want them to act. Mm. Then fourthly, like I said, make it a habit. We need to do it consistently. We lay our bed when we come in the morning. We don't tell lies. Mm. If you tell lies, you know the consequence, you know. And I'm also going to say that, you know, we need to also understand that we own the dream. You need to have mm. your, your children own it. Today, it's my vision. I, there was something I wrote on my, on, my, on my Facebook page a while ago. So I was my son. We went into the library. I told him, I said, look, Ethan, you know, as we came into the library, we're very different because of the color of our skin. But I said, you know, you should be known beyond, like Martin Luther King would say, beyond who you are physically, but about the quality of your thoughts, the quality of your intent, the correct. nature you bring about. And, and I, I ended up saying, I just pray you see what I see. Mm. So we become successful when what we see becomes what our children envision. Mm. Then you can say, I've, I've done a good job. Mm -hmm. If you want your child to be studios, you need to cut down TV times. Mm. It doesn't need the Xbox in the house. His friends can have it. You cannot have it. I tell my son, well, your friends can have Xbox. I can, I can, I can afford it. But you that I know, you've not even regimented yourself. Well, I'll not give you a, a, a Xbox. You will, I mean, it's, it's, it's disastrous. So you need to be intentional. You need to, and the children know that when they're mm. guided, you love them. I'm amazed right. that I correct my kids. The next minute they say, mommy, I'm sorry. And they come hugging me. They love me irrespective. But if we don't do that, we will have the shame. We will have the, the, the displeasure of having unruly kids. So guys, let's be intentional. It's about the most important thing you can do. And I was telling my son the other day, I said, you know, it's not about you. It's about my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren and my great-great-grandchildren. And he looked mm. back and said, yes, it's not about you alone. 
I'm looking at when I'm not here in 50, 60 years time. That's right. How would my grandchildren be raised? We're already talking about their spouses. They pray for their spouses today. Mm. So we need to be intentional. We need to create the vision. They are not too young. You know, the mind is like a muzzle. Everything you take sinks in. So let them have the best of your presence. Now that God has given you life, you have access to them. By the time they are 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, they're gone. They are living with you, but they are gone. So ensure that when they leave you because they are matured behind you, like I was telling my son, I said, I will keep talking to you until you, my voice irritates you. That when you sleep, all you hear is my voice. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And until you see is mommy's face, I said, Ben, then you remember. Let me give you a good example. I, will, I went for choir rehearsals sometime in December. And my two kids, where I just told them, I gave them iPads, please sit down, you know, while I sing. And I was watching them from afar. So at the end of the rehearsals, I went to pick them up. And one man came, oh, they are your kids. Oh, they are so well behaved. I'm like, oh, really? Yes, you know, they sat down. I told them, I said, these kids that want to come in the house, how come they are so well behaved? You know, they sat down, they were quiet. And I looked at them, I said, really, amazingly. So I told the kids, I said, you see, when I'm, I'm arousing you at home, you think mommy is a witch. Now you can see that outside, you know, <laughs> you're afraid. And the next Saturday, somebody said, oh, your kids are well behaved. I was wondering who's the mother of these kids. I'm like, oh, really? I had to tell my parents. I said, see you. let me thank your grandchildren. You know, they made me proud, you know, when I was a church. So you never can tell when there's a point where they need to make a decision. It is what you put into them. I'm sorry, I'm a, I'm a Christian. I may have to quote a scripture. Isaiah 54. That's fine. Say your children will be thought of the Lord. But Amen. they'll be taught of the Lord through your voice. So mm. please pay your part. Play your part. Speak it. Talk mm. about it. Exemplify it. They would see and they would hear. That's correct. Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm just going to honor and I recognize some more people. We have Uyime. Um, I'm not sure where you're calling from, but thank you so much. We have Udwax from Canada. We have Wale. I'm not sure where you're calling from, but I appreciate you. Thank you. We have Cynthia from Canada. Thank you so much. We have Mabel from Lagos. Thank you. And um, I'm just going to sweep up here. Just one second. I don't want to miss anyone. And that was some great um, nugget that you have just dropped. Guys, we have to be intentional to avoid the embarrassment. We have to be intentional. If you do not want the negative levels on your children, you have to be a part of it. Um, a lot of times parents disconnect from their kids. They think that the kids is the responsibility of the teacher to do it. But no, you spend a lot of time with them at home. Most importantly, you have to exemplify it. You cannot ask them to do something that you're not doing. So parents, I know that I'm going to be staring and firm this morning, <laughs> but I still love you. But we want the best for our kids. So you have to exemplify that civilized presence at home. And then it will be easy for the children uh, to just follow on. So um, finally, because we just had um, new people who have joined us. Hello, Mavi Sibo. Thank you, Maya. Thank you so much for joining in from Nigeria. So I'm just going to put on this question again, just to wrap it up. Why should the family own this? Because we have new people who have just joined and I want them to get that part. Um, because children have got exposure to other sources, like you had mentioned about um, the iPad. And a lot of times some kids have their mentors and look up to people on TV. And that is not the right influence that they need. Um, I had someone in the comments say for parents in Nigeria, I just designed a parent mental kit. Thank you so much, Udwak. I think we're going to have you on the show. I'd like to talk about that. That sounds uh, really great. So Christy, just before we leave, why should the family own this? And what do the families have to do to close the gap? The children are exposed to all kinds of influences on TV, on, 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 on the social media, around them. Um, sometimes they get to school and they meet and hang out with the wrong people. Why should the family own this? Parents, you have to connect with your child. You have to make sure that you know who he or she is hanging around with. Okay, like John Maxwell says that we are the sum total of the five people that we spend the most time with. So if your kids are hanging around with the wrong person 
and you are not doing the right job at home, I'm sorry, but you're going to produce just what you, you want it. So we have to be intentional. I know that we are busy. I know that sometimes we're tired when we get home, but we have to make out that extra time. So uh, Christy, just before you go, let us know why the family should own this. Thank you. Over to you. So thank you, Louisa. Again, we need to understand that um, when there's a shame or there's consequence of a child's action, we feel the pain directly, not the school, not the government. You know, you feel the impact directly. Mm. God forbid you lose a loved one, a loved one I mean, you would feel the impact directly. So if the consequence of their actions or the responsibilities they take up or not is your major, if you are the major recipient, then you have to own it. Mm. Again, you spend the most time with the kids. Supposedly, if, I mean, if you make out time for them, you spend most of the time with them. Or I would say you have the opportunity to spend the most time with them. We own it. We need to own it. You are the one that God gave that child to or that relationship to have the child with. Mm. The school is going to, just going to have them from 8 to 3 p.m. You have the evenings to, with them. You have the afternoons with them. So we need to ensure that we don't let the sleep. It doesn't belong to the schools. There are a lot of conflicting information in the schools today. You need to write on their hearts, not the schools. The best the school can teach them is the, is the discipline. Okay, I need them. I need them. They're going to teach them to be doctors, to be lawyers. But it's things that they are, their life will write on the full crumb of your life comes from the home. So please, parents, please, uncles, please, aunties, be the impact. You know, some of us we talked today about one uncle or one auntie that helped us when we are growing old. Mm -hmm. Ensure that when a child looks back and they're going to write their biography or somebody's writing their, their biography, they will remember that when I had met this lady, she, she gave me two or three examples of what I shouldn't do and my life is impactful. We don't, have, like I always say, we don't need to have the world stage to make a difference. You have... Mm the stages in your little corners when nobody sees you. Mm. Like Lisa said earlier, who did you smile to today? Who did you say hello to today? Who did you open the door to coming up to you today? We are so particular to have it. You know, we need to, we only want to display ourselves when we can be seen. But who you really are is when no one is watching. And that is why the home is important. Nobody sees you when you're disciplining your kids or when you're loving them or when you're praying for them. But what people see is the, is the example your children have when they go out there. So ensure you have your kids grounded. And that also means you have to be grounded. I, I'm telling my son, I was telling my husband yesterday, I said, you know what? I'm learning as I'm leading. Mm. I mean, sometimes, I, and before I mm. sleep, I do some things before I sleep mm. at night. I read a chapter of any of the books I'm reading and I read my Bible. Mm. We need to be consistent. And our kids, so let me give you an, a practical example. You know, when we, when we relocated to Canada, I, I wanted my child to have, you know, a, a steady culture of reading his Bible. So I started by saying, you know, read your Bible every morning. So every morning I used to chase him, go read your Bible. The next morning I'd read your Bible. But you know, today, after breakfast, I did not tell him. He goes, picks his devotion, and he reads. I, I started something else two days ago. It was confession. I gave them a daily confession. Basically, again, my vision of what I want them to, to be. So my son reads this to his five-year-old sister. Two nights ago, when we were having devotion at night, I asked them, what are the two things you can, you, remember, you can remember from your confession? And I hear my son say, um, my body shall not be broken, my blood shall not mm. be spilled. And my daughter says, I, I do not keep company with, brand, with bad friends. And my son says, I'm going to get a scholarship. Now, this is just five days. This is just less than five days. Wow. And I still had them do it this morning. So we have the opportunity to build, forget the society. You have a greater impact on your kids. You know, mm. Again, I'll leave with the scripture. Your children will be taught of the Lord and great shall be their peace. Their peace mm. is also your peace. So to mm. me, I want to have, be a grandmother and be at peace. That's and right. I'm going to do the work today. <laughs> That's right. I'm going, to do the, I'm going to do the work today now that I have the influence. And my parents have about 13 grandchildren today and they are all so happy. We mm -hmm. all, but it was tough being disciplined. My father was a disciplinarian. Today, myself, my mom are like friends. We discuss, but those days it wasn't. I'm going to give an example. And today, I, I was about 16 years old. I can see some people from my con home country, and I did make. A, I made eba. Eba is actually cassava. Mm -hmm. So I made the eba, and for some reason, I didn't. I don't know why that was particular to my mom. I did not, um, you know, clean the edge of the pot. You know, I just put water in it and put it on the sink. Oh my, my mom came over me that day. You are this, you are that. When you get to your husband's house, you would, and I'm like, what? What's the big deal, mom? 
But you know, till today, if I have to make a bar, I remember. And even though my mom is not, <laughs> it's not with me, I still clean the edge of the pot. You know, right. I still have to. And the same if you go to the homes of my sisters, but our husband, I've got two other two sisters. When our husbands discuss, they'll say, three of you are just the same thing. Be back. You know, you're just a meticulous because of the same training. So please, people, let us be intentional. God and life has given us a great opportunity. You need not be mm -hmm. a president to make a change. Start today. Mm -hmm. Start today, you know, and then when we look back tomorrow, we can, you know, we can look back and, you know, be glad that we made a difference mm -hmm. while, we, while we had the opportunity. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so much, Christy. That was such a great message. I'm just going to recognize Choma that's calling from Nigeria. Thank you. Tony from the U.S. Valerie Effie from the U.S. Thank you so much for joining us. I think we had a wonderful session. I don't know about you guys, but I, I, I really enjoyed myself. And I've seen all the hearts and the likes. This is such an important topic that affects all of us directly or indirectly, even when you don't have kids, you are responsible to be the right example to your sister or your brother's kids or even to your neighbors, okay? You cannot pass on what you do not have. The change no. must begin with you. And the change has to begin today. Right after this session, I want to have some messages or feedbacks from you and how you've been able to use this wisdom nugget from this session. Thank you so much. So for those of you that joined late, you can go back to watch on the replay. And like I had said earlier on, oh, I have my cousin there. Hello, Queen from Houston. Thank you so much for being here. That we are gonna change the time from uh, the next session. So the beginning of June, we're moving on to 9.30 a.m. Eastern time. That looks like a lot better time for our viewers, okay? And this session, is for you. I'm here to serve you. Uh, we are interested in hearing from you and having you participate fully in the program. Thank you for being here. Um, another um, uh, announcement that I had for us at the beginning was that you would have to like my Facebook business page, So Unique Experts, because from the next session, we are just going to be broadcasting right from the Facebook business page. Okay? I want to work with people who are focused and interested in what we do. So please come over to the page and just like us and you would have access to this video uh, starting from Friday. So thank you so much. I'm not going to keep you um, here. I'm just going to check if we have another question here. Uh, but no, everyone is saying all the wonderful things about you, Christy. Thank you for thank you. making our time to be here. I hope to see you again on our program. Thank you, Thanks everyone. Have me. a wonderful day. Bye for now. Thank you, everyone. Have a great day. Thanks for having me. Bye.